current episode I'm filming is uh, currently being filmed, but I ran into a shipping delay on a key essential ingredient, so I decided to switch gears over to something that we have not done in a little while. We have made injection molds using a variety of techniques like resin mixed with iron oxide, silicone, specialty high heat silicone inside of a metal frame. We've also made 3D printed molds and 3D printed molds inside of aluminum frames and other variations on that idea. Now I have made pewter push molds. There we go. A push mold is one that you push together to form the material or you know a one part mold that you push the material down into. But what about a pewter injection mold? And this is a question I have received before. Now, although I have sort of answered this question, not only would the surface finish not be as good with a pewter or aluminum mold, cause it would be pitted and not be smooth. My main concern is it start to melt at 400 degrees. So, you know. I said, let's just see what happens if we actually try this. Dum. Here goes one of my figure designs. I look at this as the prototype of the figure that I eventually want to uh, produce because we've already changed this design, made uh, some of the parts better for molding, did draft angles and made the figure reversible, uh, more modular and more fun stuff. So that's the idea for, for someday down the road. I really want to see this happen. But for now, the old design will work for illustration purposes. Even though this silicone is not designed specifically for high temperature, like Mold Max 60, silicone is very decently heat resistant in a way. And for anybody interested, this particular silicone is smooth on uh, Umo. It's not as tough as platinum cure silicone, but because it's tin cure silicone, you can make a mold of the original resin 3D prints without worrying about uh, cure inhibition and, and getting a goopy mess and no acrylic spray sealing required. I like to add me a little powder to my mold. Uh, this one is cornstarch based by the way so that's that's better than some baby powder but the powder helps with the surface tension to allow a better flow. Please please be careful anytime you messing with this because it's hot! It's hot. Very hot. Craftman, what temperature does that melt at? Now some of these are pewter, bismuth, and different type alloys and different metals, the low temp. You looking at probably around 400 degrees air fresh. I didn't have my laser thermometer out here uh, to get a temperature, so uh, I accidentally let this one go a little bit too hot, as you will see. Whenever you do this, please resist the temptation to uh, put your finger down in uh, to try to get the bubbles out, all right? We're going to talk more about that. Now, I can already see some couple three problems with the modes as it is but uh, that's what it turned out like right there but let's try to inject some plastic into this see what happens now remember that even though you might be injecting plastic this might have a 400 degree you know around that or uh, a melting point 
are into a pewter mold, that is on the dangerous side of things. All right? It ain't going to immediately just melt or nothing. The heat has to uh, transfer to conduct and to build up to actually get the temperature of the mold to there. But Craftman knows from experience with metal molds, uh, although they conduct differently, uh, aluminum molds sometimes get up to 150 or something, you know, degrees, and I might have to cool them down. If I was using a pewter mold, I would probably have me some water nearby and it would feel more comfortable cooling that mold off every couple of shots, you know. This particular material is a thermoplastic elastomer that melts between 360 to 370 degrees. And I like it because it's rubber, flexible, and tough, and it's orange color. Again, I just want to emphasize this is not something I recommend. Please don't try this. I'm just uh, basically answering the question, you know, and seeing if it even can work. All right, so we got us apart. Now, I knew some of the details was messed up because, you know, the mold was messed up. And why is that? Well, whenever I pour resin molds, I like to take a toothpick, a finger, something, and go around there and get them bubbles out. We don't need no bubbles in these molds now. Or either put it in the pressure pot, but that's not really for me an option with pewter, either one of them. But we can see these rounded edges right there. And that's all because that thing did not flush. The metal did not push into them corners is really what happened. Is it possible to take a piece of metal or something? Yeah, maybe, probably, I don't know. But I just really don't feel safe using pewter. An alternative that is much better would be to use aluminum if you want to pour your mold. I'm not so much a big fan of poured molds because it tends to give a pitted sort of texture because the metal is pitted. Now you can do some fill aluminum, high heat aluminum epoxy filler and get you a smooth surface. So going forward, Craftsman's two options that I look at is, if I need to make buku or something, I'm going to have a metal mold CNC'd out of aluminum. And if I want to do a, a more shorter run, then I'm just going to 3D print it with Soraya Sculpt or Soraya Clear. 3D print resin. I hope this video was informational and fun for you to enjoy. It always feels like cheating when I put out one of these little shop logs like this, but like I said, I'm about two or three days uh, from getting the materials I need to complete my my little uh, shop or uh, uh, diorama that I'm working on. But thank you for tuning in. I hope you're staying creative and staying happy, and I just appreciate you taking time to watch this video. I love y'all and keep on steadily crafting or steady crafting. All right.